Hello and welcome to Keep Common Craft On. I'm Stephanie. I am super excited for today's video because I've been wanting to engrave a handwritten recipe onto a cutting board like this since before I even owned a Glowforge. It's one of the projects I knew I was going to create for my shop with the Glowforge and it's taken a while to get around to it, but today's the day. I have the easiest method out there and I can't wait to share with you all the details. But first, I just want to quickly mention that if you've been thinking about buying a Glowforge so you can laser engrave projects like this one, I'm leaving my referral code in the description box below so you can save up to $500 on the purchase of a new Glowforge. Just click the link and the discount will be automatically entered in your cart at checkout and you can be creating projects like this one in no time. Let's get started. First, I'm going to get the cutting board all set up in the Glowforge ready to laser. Now for this project, you need to remove the crumb tray because the cutting board is too thick to be engraved on top of the crumb tray. But it's too short to just sit on the base of the Glowforge, so you're going to need to build it up with some height. I use these little risers, which is a free file that I found, and I will link it in the description box below. These are awesome whenever you need to add a little bit of height to your projects. So I'm able to stack the cutting board on these little risers and it's going to get it at the perfect height for me. And for this setup part, you want your machine off because we are going to have to move the arm to make sure we have it at the right height and you cannot do that with your uh, machine on. I will also link another video in the description box below where I went into more detail about finding the right height of your objects. I'm just going to kind of quickly go through that in this one. Now I always double check and make sure I don't have my object too high, so I always make sure that this little air assist piece here is uh, not going to run into my whatever I'm lasering. And then because I want to make sure I get a straight engrave, what I do is I line up the bottom of my cutting board since I know that is straight. I push it and line it up against the edge of the door of the Glowforge, and that's going to ensure that I get a straight engrave on the cutting board. So I'm going to be showing you how to do this using the Silhouette Studio software. I'm using Business Edition. This is the software that I use for any designing that I do. You should be able to modify this in whatever design program you use. You should have similar features, even though they may be called something different. Um, if you know the program, you will probably be able to figure out how to adapt this to that program. You do not have to have a Silhouette to use this software. All right, so I have my... Um, file open and you can see here I have downloaded the templates that JDS Industries supplies because that is where I got my um, cutting board from and I love it because they've given me this sample looks better than a photo that I could take to have my little mock-up and then it also gives an outline which is where I usually kind of stick my design um, so that I can see it because it gets a little hard whenever you're working on um, the cutting board surface. So I don't need those right now. I'm just going to keep those over to the side. I have also already imported what my customer has sent me, the PDF of the recipe that we're going to work with. Now I'm just moving it over here to the side and I'm going to zoom in so we can see it. So you want to have your customer or whoever you're doing this for scan the recipe and send it to you that way. I do not recommend taking a photo of it and them sending you that because you're just going to lose some of the detail probably in the recipe and you may not get as good of a trace that way. So this was a scanned PDF that my customer sent me and I just imported it here into Silhouette Studio. Now I was fortunate that this scan, it already took away a lot of the lines that were on this um, index card. I think this was on, in, on an index card because I can see a couple of lines, but for the most part, this one's going to be super easy because I don't have to get rid of any lines. I just need to good, get a good trace on these letters. So I'm going to come over here to this little butterfly looking symbol. This is the trace panel. I'm going to open that up, select trace area. And I'm just going to highlight all of the recipe that I want to trace. So I've highlighted it. And then once you get it highlighted, you can see all these little yellow marks. That is where Silhouette is getting ready to trace the recipe. But as you can see, we cannot make out the recipe. It's only going to get bits and pieces there. So you come over here and you go to threshold. Threshold is always at default 45%. And you're just going to start moving that little slider bar up 
And as you do that, you can see that the yellow is turning more yellow and you're seeing more of the words being traced. Now, if you go too far right now, let's see, I'm at 78, that's looking pretty good. But let me just show you, if I go all the way up to 100, there is too much. <laughs> so you don't want to get all those extra lines. Yeah, see this, this was definitely an index card because now you can see those lines that are just very faint on the scan, which is actually a great thing. Um, so I'm just going to move it down and see if I can get most of those lines to be gone, but the words to really be standing out. So um, you can either use the slider bar or sometimes you may have to go use the little arrows if you need to just go up teeny bits. So let's see, I'm at 89. Uh, let me go, let me, let's see, let me think. All right, let me stick with the 89% there. I can see that I have some other, some lines showing up here, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to get rid of those. All right, so once you get your threshold so that you can see most of your recipe, then you're going to hit trace down here. And that box will go away when it has already traced. And now you're gonna see all of this in red. So I'm just moving the original image out of the way. Now, if I click on this, it's gonna move the whole thing for me, but I don't wanna do that. I need to right click on it and I'm gonna come down here and release compound path and click on that. Give it a minute. Okay, now you see how it, it has broken everything up into individual little, uh, little pieces. I don't, I don't know what they're called, little um, images, I guess you could say. So now I'm just clicking on this blank space here. Now what I need to do is clean this up. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna highlight here, like those two little um, spots I don't need. He, over here, this was some of the line from the index card. I just highlight those and delete them. And that's how I'm going to be cleaning up all this extra stuff. And it's my little highlighter mouse gets in the way a little bit there. Um, but you can kind of highlight multiple things at a time. And once you see the little, that little box um, around it, see there's all those little dots, this box around it, that means it's highlighted and then just hit delete and it gets rid of them. This big line down here. Um, let's see. I think that looks like most of them. Sometimes you got teeny tiny little ones that, whoops. Okay, see I, I um, deleted too much, so I'm just going to undo that. And there it is, so don't freak out if you delete something you shouldn't, or look, <laughs> I clicked the wrong thing and it, it separated my O, so just undo if you do something like that and you get too much. Oh, here's another line to delete. All right. I think that that is mostly cleaned up. Oh, I see one little one here. Okay, now that I've got it cleaned up how I want, now I'm going to highlight it all again. And I'm taking another look because sometimes when you highlight it, then you can see the stray little boxes of little pieces that shouldn't be there. But I think I got it all. All right, now I'm going to right click again. Whoops, nope, I lied. I see some over here. Okay, highlight it all again, right click, and now we're gonna make it a compound path. So we're gonna put all of the pieces back together again. And this is kind of really hard to read still because we've just got the outline of it. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna fill it in black. And then I'm going to take away the red outline so that you can see what it's gonna look like written. All right. And let me just zoom in a little bit more so you can see. So there is the trace of the recipe. It's most likely never gonna be perfect, but that's part of the beauty of this. It is something that is handwritten um, from someone usually very special to you. So it's fine if it's not perfect. And like this right here, this is gonna be a little bit hard to read just because I believe that says leaves. You'll be able to figure it out from 
the recipe most of the time. So don't worry about it being absolute perfect. Just get it close to what you like. Okay, so once you have your trace how you like it, click on it and you're gonna get this little outline box on it and you need to save it as an SVG. So I'm gonna come down here to save selection. I save it to my hard drive. Now, this is one thing that you might not be able to do if you just had the basic edition. I'm not positive, I'll have to check on that. Um, but with, I know designer edition and business edition, um, you can save as an SVG. If not, um, you, can save as a PNG, I believe. I will check on all of that and let you know in the description box below um, what version of Silhouette you can save as SVG and PNG. Um, but I'm gonna save to an SVG. And if you if you are going to be using Silhouette um, to use your Glowforge, I suggest upgrading to the Designer Edition. You probably don't need Business Edition. I only have that so I can run two machines at one time. Um, designer Edition would be, um, you'd have like all the features except for running two machines. Okay, so I've got my, I've um, got three bean chili traces, my title, and saving as SVG, okay. And the SVG is what I'm going to take into the Glowforge and get ready to engrave onto the cutting board. So now I'm in the Glowforge interface and I've already imported the recipe SVG into Glowforge. If you need a more in-depth tutorial about how to get your artwork into Glowforge, I will link another video I did where I went into a lot more detail about how I do that. I'll link that in the iCard above and in the description box below so you can watch that um, if you need more instructions. So I have the recipe here. You can see inside um, the, the cutting board is ready to go. And right now, Glowforge doesn't have any idea what I want to do with my file. Well, it kind of has an idea. Over here, you see it's already put in grave on the artwork because it can tell um, since the words here are filled in that I am wanting to engrave this because anytime you have a color filled in, that means you're engraving. If you have just an outline, that means you're going to cut. We definitely don't want to cut these words out. All right, so, but I need to tell Glowforge the settings that I need. I'm not using medium draft board. It just kind of defaults to that. Um, I'm obviously not using proof grade material. So I'm going to have to click here on my artwork and I have already engraved a cutting board before. This is acacia wood cutting board. So I have my settings here, which I will share with you. I did speed 1000, power 70, and lines per inch 340 with one pass. Now, because the, um, the acacia wood is dark and these, um, these words are really small, I want to make sure that it really stands out. So I think I'm going to adjust this a little bit for this time. Since I want the words to be a little bit darker so they stand out more, I'm going to adjust the speed because I want to slow it down just a little bit. I'm not going to change it too much because... Um, especially with this project. This is the only cutting board I have left in stock, so I really can't mess this up. So this is a little nerve wracking today, but hopefully it will be fine. Um, so I'm going to adjust the speed because basically I want the laser to spend a little more time um, on the sections, on each section of the cutting board, um, or as it's running over the words, I want it to burn a little bit longer to get a darker engrave. So instead of speed 1000, um, let me slow it down. Like I said, I don't want to go too much. Let me do 950 um, and see if that makes a difference. I think the other settings would be fine, but I'm just going to try and get a little darker. Um, but I want, don't want to go too dark and mess it up. All right. So now I just need to um, make sure that the recipe is sized how I want it and centered on the cutting board just like I want it. So from here you can, you know, if you need to make it bigger or smaller, you can just adjust there um, with that little, with those little nodes. Uh, let's see, I think this looks kind of just about right where I put it. Um, and you know, I'm just an eyeballer, so I'm just playing around with it. Um, don't ask me why sometimes I feel like if I move this little section that it helps me see it better. I don't know. Um, okay, I think that's pretty good because I think I want to just have it centered there in the board and that looks pretty good. All right. And yeah, now I'm just going to move that back. No particular reason why. 
um, I'm weird like that. Okay. Now, before I am ready to print, I need to go up here to these three dots and hit set focus. And then I'm just going to tap here where the middle of my cutting board is. And that is going to let Glowforge do its magic. And you see over here, it's focusing. It's going to get it to just the right height so that it does a perfect engrave for me. And then over here, you can just see I've got it at 950 speed, 70 power. All right. Oh, and of course, I should have set focus before I placed my uh, recipe, which if you watch that other video that I linked, um, I show you in there that I mess this up all the time. I forget to set focus and then I have to readjust my artwork. So I'm going to resize this down just a tad bit because it looked a little large. And adjust it. So set focus before you put your artwork just where you want it because when Glowforge focuses, then it um, it changes the look of everything. All right. I think that is good. And I'm not going to lie, I'm a little nervous right now. <laughs> this is the real deal. This is real time. Um, and I have to give this to a customer um, tomorrow. So fingers crossed I don't mess this up. All right. I'm going to come over here and click print. And it's going to prepare my print and tell me how long it is going to take to engrave this. All right, so it's going to take 27 minutes and 44 seconds to engrave. That's not bad at all. I actually thought this was going to take a lot longer just because of the tiny words on here. Um, but that's not bad at all. So now I just need to go to the Glowforge and hit that magic, magic glowing button and watch it do its magic. This is the best part. Okay, I just had to interrupt the video for just a second because I did end up doing a test and grave really briefly on a scrap piece of wood because I was so nervous about messing this only cutting board I have left up. So that's what this is. Um, I really just wanted to make sure that the words were going to be clear enough when they were engraved because obviously I'm engraving on a different kind of wood. So this I know this is not how it's going to look, but it just lets me know that the words are going to be clear enough in an engrave. And here is how it turned out. I could not be happier with the results. And I am so glad I didn't mess it up. So once the engraving is done, you're done. You can wash it off with a little soap and water just to get rid of some of the sticky residue that is left around the engraving. But other than that, you are all finished. So these cutting boards really are pretty easy to do using the Silhouette Studio software. The key is making sure you have a high quality original scan to the recipe, not a photo taken of the recipe card or the paper, whatever it's on. So have a scanned copy to um, be able to get a better trace of the recipe. So it is possible to put the recipe in the bed of the Glowforge and have Glowforge trace it. But the problem with that is then you're not able to edit out all those little extra spots and lines that that are there. So that's why I like to do it in Silhouette Studio so that I can edit it and get it just how I want before I actually laser it. So I would love to hear what you think of this method and this project. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And remember, if you're interested in purchasing a Glowforge of your own so that you can do projects like this, I will be leaving my referral link in the description box below so you can save up to $500 on a purchase of a Glowforge. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these cutting boards with your own handwritten recipe on it, I will leave a link in the description box below where you can purchase one ready-made by me from my website. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I really hope to see you in my next one.